Live from Iowa, the home of APQS and some of the most enthusiastic long-arm quilters in the world, it's APQS Gone Quilting with Fonz and Porter. And now, here are the faces of the love of quilting magazine and TV show, Marianne Fonz and Liz Porter. Well, welcome everyone. We have a fantastic show for you today with some of the world's best known and most accomplished long arm quilters. But the real stars are not us. The real stars for today are right behind us. The wonderful APQS long arm quilting machines. And we have some people coming who actually really are experts at running these machines, too. And you're going to see how they incorporate their techniques to make these uh, machines into create beautiful quilts. Techniques that you can use to create your own quilts. You know, Marianne, I started quilting on a home sewing machine. And I would spend maybe a full week machine quilting a quilt. My shoulders would hurt. I'd be tired. It was hard work. It's a huge, huge job. I hear you. I know. And I didn't even get that far, I don't think. And many other quilters, us included, take our quilts, our quilt tops, to professional long-arm quilters to have in the finish. They do a great job, but for some people, that's a little bit too expensive if they're really prolific quilters. And uh, the big problem is those long-arm quilters have a backlog of tops, and it could be that wedding quilt that you want for the wedding, you know, could be, it's too late. Well, and if you really want to get them done in time, you have to have your own. That's right. when the Well, that's starts. when it really starts. The first time I saw an APQS machine, I wondered if it would take a lot of effort to use it. But let's go show yeah. how easy let's it is. Let's show them what because, we're talking about. You know, there's this great big machine. I thought, oh, man, you know, this is going to be hard to use, but it just floats. And I can just move it with the tips of my fingers, just one, or even one finger. Yeah. It's, it's very it's, cool. It's great. It, be, it becomes your best friend. Um, so, you know, the ability to move the head with that great technology is why it's called Freehand Freedom. And it's very fun. You can use it all day long without getting tired and let your imagination absolutely run wild. You can translate anything you can think of into stitching onto your quilt. It's like drawing with a needle. It's loads and loads of fun. But APQS is more than uh, just about fantastic machines. There's so much more when you work with APQS. It's about customer service, which means that you get the full benefit from the machine that you buy, from helping you pick out which machine is the right fit for you, um, to financing, should that be necessary, to helping you set up your machine in your own home. With a yes. house call. And that's helpful. Yes. And should you ever need service, you can get it on by calling. Um, I you know I've heard their technicians can about tell you how to take the machine totally apart over the phone and put it back together, even if you've never operated a screwdriver. If we have heard great stories about yes. that customer service. So there's something else that makes APQS machines better. They're made in America by American craftsmen who take great pride in creating the finest long iron machine. There are no assembly lines at APQS. Each machine is handcrafted, which is a very unique thing in today's world. It's meticulous attention to detail. It's like it's custom made just for you, just what you need. There's an important difference also in the uh, material that's used for the heads of the long arm machine. It's precision welded with the world's finest grade of aircraft quality aluminum. That means there's less vibration, which is really important, and the machine head weighs so much less than most other long arms. Well, there. That's how you get the free hand freedom. That's why they're so effortless to use. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Let's get started seeing some of the features that make these machines so special. We want to introduce our first guest, a quilter whose freehand work has been winning awards for her clients since her business started in 1994. She's the winner of Best Machine Quilting Honors for the past three years at the wonderful Iowa State Fair. Yeah. And she's a national long arm educator and a judge, a quilt show judge. So let's have a big hand for Dawn Cavanaugh. Dawn Cavanaugh! Come on, Dawn. Come on now! Yay! <laughs> hey guys, good to see you. Dawn, hey, thank you. Now. It's a great 
great to see you. Dawn. Thanks. We're excited to see what you're going to show us today. Oh, I'm excited to show you too. Hey, I heard that you've been working on the machine and you just about have a quilt done for your daughter's boyfriend. It's for Valentine's Day. It's coming up and I finished it last night. I took it off the machine yesterday afternoon and there's nothing like that feeling of a job well done and it only took me a few hours. Wait, Marianne, you told me it took you three hours start yeah. to finish, yeah. which is amazing. Yeah. Well, a couple plus one. Yeah, a couple plus one. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's, I mean, that's it, terrific. Yeah, it's beautiful. And the binding's all done? The binding is done. I finished it just before I rolled the camera. I Woo. probably took you as long to do the binding as it did to quilt. Oh, yeah, well, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's great. And you figured out that it doesn't take very long on a machine to get those quilt projects I finished. I love doing it. I love making a quilt all myself. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really wonderful. great. I love, I love long-arm professionals like you, but there's a wonderful satisfaction in thinking, I made this myself start to finish. That's great. Hey, can you always keep a secret? Well, well can really I tell her? <laughs> well, okay. we can talk about it together. <laughs> okay. I've been having a love affair for the past 14 years. Ooh, Dawn, that's kind of serious. I know. A Midwestern know. girl like you? <laughs> yeah. Hey, what can I say? We, we can certainly make some fun. And yeah. I, I want to tell you, it's been with someone that you both know. Ooh, that's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show not you my, who it not is. Not my ex-husband. <laughs> no, it's not your ex-husband. No, no, no. No. But this ah, definitely has some smooth well, lines is, here. That's yes. better. I feel a little better about that. That's good. A lot of late nights, I bet. Lots of, of late, late nights, nights quilting in my pajamas, yeah. stocking feet, exactly. Yeah. But my love affair with APQS and my machine's been going on for 14 years. Well, I can understand that because you, the more you do, the more fun it is. It's exactly that. That it's so much fun that I just don't want to quit. Okay, well, I grew up on a farm and I love to work outside, so I would help my dad working in the field. One of the things that just drove him nuts was when I try and find reverse in the tractor. Oh. Okay? Yeah. You gotta use the clutch. Okay. Yeah. Maybe that was the yeah. problem because those Greek gears would just yeah. go. Yeah. It's an, ugly sound, yeah. it's an ugly sound. Well, one of the things I really love about my APQS quilting machine takes care of that. It's called a synchronous belt drive. Have you heard of that? Ooh, that uh, nope, I, I believe you. You believe me? <laughs> hey, I'm going to, oh, you two are always working together, so I'm going to yeah. actually make you work a little okay. bit harder today. This is the synchronous belt that works in the back of the APQS quilting machine right back here, oh. and it runs the drive pulley. That's what gives me such beautiful stitches. This puppy does not stretch. Now, I know you two have worked together for so long. Let's see if you okay. can pull that apart. Oh, oh no. that's, yeah, that's how you get that great stitch quality yeah. then that's such, so consistent. Exactly. That's the same type of belt you'd find that's running your car engine. Yeah. It's and, really strong. And, and, it, and the neat thing about it is I don't even need to know it. I mean, it's great to know it's in there. I just start quilting. You know, because I, it's, it's in there, I know it's working, and that's why. It's the hidden stuff that yeah, makes it work. right. Exactly. Those teeth work together with the drive pulley, and because it's so precise, if I move the machine left or right, it doesn't really matter because that passes the torque all the way through the shaft mm -hmm. up to my needle. That's why we can move it in so many great directions and have beautiful stitches. Well, that's really neat. Just like yesterday, I would go down, and then I would go back and forth, and I didn't even <laughs> break thread, and it was fantastic. It's, it, exactly. And since there aren't any metal gears running next to each other inside the machine, you wouldn't hear that yeah. like you did with the tractor when I was switching gears. So I can run this without needing to, you know, get involved with the clutch and, and tearing <laughs> stuff up. This is one of those affairs that's really worked out well. Exactly. Yeah. It's Unlike other kinds. That, yeah. Very true. <laughs> Very true. Well, I'm just dying to have you show us some things on the machine, Don. Great. Well, let's move around. I've some things on the handles I'd like to tell you about. Well, just take a look at the three of us. We're not even the same height. Quilters come in all shapes and sizes, and we all have a passion. Would you agree? We love to quilt. Exactly. We love to quilt. I would quilt before I'd clean house. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Before I'd cook supper. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Before I'd, well, you know, you can Watch think of a TV. lot of different things. Yeah. See, yeah. the advantage of making it a business is that you can justify right. not cleaning the house <laughs> and not cooking supper. I'm just working. I have important work to do. Yeah. I do, too. Mm -hmm. Exactly. If anyone comes to visit and they lift up a cup, they better put it exactly in the same spot where that dust ring is. <laughs> yeah. because, makes it know easy what? to find where to put it. Quilters exactly. are good at that. They can line things up. <laughs> exactly. The machine makes it easy to line things up, too, because the handles adjust for you. If I'm taller and need to stand upright, I can pull them up. If I'm a little bit more petite, I can push them down. 
And really what's terrific is I can quilt for a long time. I don't have to worry about supper because if I get a little fatigued, I can even sit down to quilt. Yeah. You, have you guys done that yet? I, yeah, I have. But, you know, about the handles, what made me think, just yesterday I was using a straight edge to go along, mm -hmm. and when I needed to see better, I could just raise the handles along to, to see where my guide was. It was. I used it all the time yesterday. Oh, of course. Yeah. If you're tired of standing and you prefer to sit, or if your hands get fatigued, you can move them up, down, even rest your wrists right here. The great thing about this adjustability is that those handles prevent that cumulative trauma injury that we all are used to. Maybe your wrists get very tired or your hands get tired. You don't have to grip this as you showed earlier, Liz. Oh, just a couple fingers. Oh. I mean, it's amazing. It's so easy. You know, the thing I found too, Don, it kind of depended what kind of stitching I was doing, mm -hmm. what position I wanted the, the handles in, uh, some kinds of stitching. I, I wanted to feel my hands down a little closer to the quilt. And mm -hmm. Other times I did better if I, like driver's ed, took the big view, you know, <laughs> had my hands up a little mm -hmm. higher. And, and, oh, and yeah. you can adjust, you know, with that adjustment keeps you from getting so yeah. tired while you're working too. Oh, most definitely. If I had to drive with my hands up here all the time, I could feel my shoulders starting mm -hmm. to come up and the stiffness in the neck. I don't feel that kind of a stress with the APQS movable handles. You know, you brought up a great point with uh, getting that down closer to your work. Doesn't that make it easier to drive when you're mm -hmm. closer? Mm -hmm. Kind of like a pencil. If I were to try and draw on a piece of paper holding that pencil up here by the eraser, it uh, wouldn't look too pretty. Uh, not too no. good. No, but if I can get my needle or my hands rather down close to the needle, just like the pencil, when I hold it down close, it's going to be beautiful. It gives me more control. Yeah, I think, that, I think that's a very neat feature. Yes. Oh, yeah. And another great thing I love is that all the controls are right at my fingertips. If I'm quilting along and I'm doing that micro stippling and I decide, gosh, I would like my stitches to be a little tighter or a little looser, with a touch of a button, I can change the stitch length. It's as easy as that. Oh, now that's very cool. You're not having to stop. And there's little no. lights that tell you what you did, too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> See, I, I like to watch I the little lever come up. I just my quilting come experience yesterday. Yeah. And then there's that little, that little bar that mm. comes up that sets the speed. And... Oh, yes. This will tell me exactly how many stitches per inch I've chosen, and it makes it easy to not make a mistake. Yeah. Try that with a hand quilt. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly or right. Or on home sewing yeah. machine. Oh, you know? gosh. That's that a long time. Right. You know, Marianne and I were quilting on TV, and I, I was really doing a pretty good job, and then Marianne decided to help smoothed down the quilt behind me and she moved the quilt and went you know, these great big stitches it was like you know really embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> you're not ever going to have to worry about that with no. the stitch regulator on an apqs machine you're going to be perfect you already are ah, you well, perfect yeah. i'm working I i'm on even it. starting to get to like take the regulator off and you know, oh my gosh mm. marianne yeah i know i never thought i'd get there but it's fun <laughs> that's way to go way to go well, the handles are another great feature but there's even something that's even neater about the apqs machine you know, I know you're, you've been a hand quilter. You've oh, yeah. been the machine I, quilter for so yeah. many years. Yeah, Mary I was, I was good quilter. at one time. Uh, <laughs> 11 <laughs> stitches to the inch. That's mm -hmm. great. Yep. Well, did you ever measure how many yards it took to put into a quilt? I know many quilters do. No, no but I, yes, I've heard about that. Heard I, I always think that? you just go by empty spools, just like beer cans or something, you know, <laughs> like how many. You know, that's one way to keep track. But I mean, you know, with hand quilting, it, you know, a lot of it you throw away. But anyway, well, that's, that's beside true. the point. But that's yes, you true. could keep track. I've, I've found many quilters that I know who have done hand quilting like to figure out how many yards of thread went into mm -hmm. that. I got to thinking, with my long arm machine, how many stitches would I typically put into a quilt? So it's not my best feature, but I did a little math. I had to get okay. the calculator yeah. out. Now, this would be interesting. Yeah. It's going to be really a, an amazing number. I figured that if I took a queen size quilt mm -hmm. and I set my stitch length to 12 stitches per inch, an average mm -hmm. number, mm -hmm. and if I did cross hatching on that quilt, I could use the automatic channel locks to do vertical mm -hmm. and horizontal lines. If I put those lines one inch apart, how many stitches do you think I'd put in that quilt? Hmm. 30,000? I was going to, the many thousands. Many thousands, exactly. Yeah. My needle would enter and exit that fabric on one quilt almost a half million times. Ooh, I was way short of wow. that. That is incredible. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That's a lot of stitching. Well, if I were hand quilting, I would not want to make a half a million stitches <laughs> in anything. I'd go for the bigger stitches. Oh, man, yeah. I mean, that's just like, mm, not going there. You'd rather know the yards of thread. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, the neat thing about that is the APQS machine right here inside the needle bar has special bushings. They're made out of sintered bronze, and they're impregnated with a very high-quality oil. That oil makes sure that there's no friction. Can you imagine a normal bushing inside there with oh. 500,000 stitches on one quilt, how quickly those are going to wear out? Oh, uh -huh. yeah. And if you'd have to oil them, what a mess that would be. Well, and that's yeah. just one more example of the really high quality of workmanship and materials and 
really thinking that have gone right. to making this. So issue. that our product, the thing we love, our passion, our quilt, is going to turn out the best it possibly can. They've done all that engineering for us. And it makes quilting oh, yeah. fun. You know, it, it does. Makes working on the machine fun. If you're fighting your equipment, it's not fun. No. If I have to stop and think about what I have to do to take care to make it ready, I'm not going to enjoy quilting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now I can step down at the beginning of the day, bring up my bobbin thread, and get going. That's great. Would you like to see some things oh, that we've yeah. been oh, doing? Yes, yes. I always great. love to watch you. I great. learned so many things by watching other people and people who really know what they're doing right. more than we, we don't we're, we're, we're learning. Learning. good we, we're, we're learning yeah. you know we're getting better all the time yeah. and it's it's like anything else you know practice makes perfect and you've been having this affair for 14 years you yeah. think that that would make you perfect, should be good yeah. by now <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, I have been at it for 14 years, but I still learn something new every day. Mm -hmm. All of us quilters love to share ideas with each other, and, that, and I think that's what makes it special. We love to talk with each other about quilting. The quilts that I brought today are going to showcase some special features. I love to do traditional style quilts. I know Marianne mm -hmm. likes traditional style things. Mm -hmm. You do too, Liz. And I also like to play with some things that are more fun. I've been experimenting with what I like to call funky feathers. I know you oh. even put out a book on mm -hmm. feather feathers, quilting. Yeah. They weren't oh. funky. They were normal. But, you know, I've done some funky feathers. <laughs> I have. I've done some funky feathers. I've had a few that turned out that way. way. No, no. But, it, yeah. you know, there, there's a contemporary angle to them. That's well, show right. us a funky feather. I'm going to show you a funky feather. I found that a lot of times uh, we quilters have made a quilt for guys. And it's very difficult to put something on there that is a masculine design in nature. So I've been playing around with some designs that really could still base itself on a feather but have a more masculine flair to them. Hmm. Awesome. Sound good? Cool yeah. yeah. Good. I'm going to use the single stitch feature on the APQS machine to bring my bobbin thread up mm -hmm. to the top of the quilt. I gave and it a I little found top. that's a good thing to remember to yeah. do. <laughs> or you get, you know, the little nasty, <coughs> like goobers. on any yeah. sewing machine. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very much so. You don't want to crawl around in the quilt and yeah. have to trim all those mm -hmm. nasty threads. I'm going to hold on to those two little tails and using that single stitch feature, take a couple of tacking stitches. You don't want to do that at home too, don't you? Mm -hmm. You don't want mm -hmm. that thread to pull out. And that secures your beginning mm -hmm. thread. Mm -hmm. That's going to make sure it's not going to come out. But if you ever wondered if you'd done enough stitches, simply separate those two tails oh. and give each one a tug. If oh, either one good. keeps on going, it's not locked yet. And the, you did the tacking with the yellow button, right? I sure yeah. did. Okay, because sometimes I use the blue and just go zh, 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 a little fast if it's on an area that's okay. You know? Oh, sure. Yeah. That would work. So there's a, it's like anything. There's more than one way to get what you need. But now I'm going to do it this way because I think it's better. Hey, you won't have quite so much thread laying yeah. up there. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. have a place for these or would you just, just do that? Yeah, that we would do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Usually I just put them on my pants or my shirt. No, you we know. transfer them from my like pants to her. Her. Yeah. Oh, Okay, you transfer them yeah, back yeah, and forth. Right. Where yeah, they go? That's, all right. <laughs> that's all right. We'll have more We'll of get those. the next one. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, funky feathers. I'm going to put on the stitch regulator. And there's this little light that's flashing to remind me that I've turned that on. It's a safety feature. I'm going to start with quilting a vein for this funky feather. You see how easily it moves. I also found that if I quilt a curvy vein, I never have to worry about the same number of feathers being on the top right. and the bottom. So that kind of gives me a little yeah. bit of an edge. I'm going to sneak my way back here. This first one that I'm going to show you I call a machete feather. Oh, That's again that's from a, the farming, having to mm -hmm. walk beans. Did any of you mm -hmm. ever have to walk beans? I did that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, get the machete, whack the yep. old cockleburrs. Mm -hmm. Definitely a thing that I don't want to have to remember. No. Keep quilting so you don't have to do that. There we go. See if this oh, looks like a machete. Sure. Huh. Well, it could be pretty on a holiday quilt yeah. too because it almost sure. looks like holly leaves. It yeah. could. A couple more little jig jags in there and you'd have holly leaves. That's right. If I change that little design ever so slightly, it's amazing how you can add just one little thing and really change the way the design looks. What would happen if I put a loop and then the arch? Hmm, that's just cool. something different. And every stitch is the same length. Yes, look how stitch regulator. Look how sharp that mm -hmm. point is. It really fires a point right when I want to change direction, so you aren't mm -hmm. going to see any round off there. I love to quilt feathers from the bottom of the feather up. I'm not very good at coming backwards, mm -hmm. so I'm going to cheat a little bit and work my way back down again. Kind of make a triple center vein. That's there you right. go. Part of the design. That's right. That's mm -hmm. If you do it enough times so and you make that. a mistake, it's mm -hmm. part of the design. Mm -hmm. I plan that. That's mm -hmm. right. This is one that you were just, just discussing that might look like a holly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I just designed something. Yeah. Isn't that not cool? It's a cool. That a girl. Look I'm throwing that. in lots of different oh, ideas for you fun. here simply by changing small things. 
You know, I think one of the things is, at first, your reaction is that it might be easiest to follow a pattern. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But actually, freehand quilting is, is really, in some ways, much easier yeah. than it is to try to follow a design. Yeah. I think so. I love to do freehand designs, but you can also control the mm -hmm. machine if you really want to right. follow a pattern. There are many ways that yeah, you can do it. You have to ways. control it to do freehand yeah. designs yeah, yeah, well, yeah. too. But, <laughs> but trying to hit a line, and then, you know, the great thing about, I think, about freehand is you're not marking anything. You know, it's no. just that, that, you know, nobody, no quilter gets up in the morning and think, oh boy, today I'm going to mark my quilting designs. You know, yeah, and you're yeah. testing it all, mm -hmm. all that mm -hmm. stuff. So yeah, that, that's Exactly. That's one of, to me, that is another free freedom mm -hmm. of freehand, mm -hmm. is that you don't, that there's so many ways you can get the design on there, and you get right to it. You do. I think that's the problem with marking. It's like you're already, your top is done, mm -hmm. and then you have this delayed pleasure because you have to mark all this stuff. So, I mean, this, you get right on it. You do. You have the freedom to create, and uh, as I said before, if I happen to make a mistake, oh, let's say, shoot, I put three loops on that little guy. It's now variation. <laughs> That's right. If I just do a couple of more with three loops, well, yeah. He looks like he belongs. He looks like he belongs. Exactly. Well, these funky feathers can have some things that go on in between them. We can have fun with some hooks. Yeah. Adding some duplications. I'm going to add a little more vein line here. Sneak my way back down. Maybe I want to do something on the inside of that feather. I like this design. Notice that I can really take my time and stop exactly right. where I want to with that stitch regulator turned you know, on. I think that's something that you find when you first get started. You, you can remember with the stitch regulator, you can stop and yeah. think. Mm -hmm. Well, and if I did want to take that pause, if I definitely had to, the kids were hollering, please make a supper or yes, we're going to yeah. faint, yeah. I can cancel that automatic stitch regulator and drop the needle down so that it keeps me in mm -hmm. position. When I come back on and turn it on again, it'll start off exactly where I ended. Yeah. Good tip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good mm -hmm. tip. Are there some quilts that you'd like to see? I brought some along. I'd love yes, to see Please your work. show us your work. I brought two with me today. Both of them tr show traditional style feathers as well as some funky feathers. The quilt that you see that's yellow and white was designed for a family, a mother of six, whose sister died, and she took in her sister's six children. Oh, so the house was built for a family of 12. So I yeah. call that yellow quilt family nucleus. You'll find that the star in the center represents the family together and the small stars and larger stars around it. The family of all 12 joined together. And lastly, the four pillars of stars in the corner represent the four churches who got oh. together to build it. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. That's great. I used some really fun gadgets that you're, you can find with your APQS quilting machine. One called a Hartley fence makes perfect oh, yes. circles. We mm -hmm. know about the Hartley <laughs> fence, yeah. yes. I use that to make no the marking. interiors. No, no marking. No marking. Mm -hmm. Nope, nope. And perfect circles, mm -hmm. which is really great. Yeah. From that, I drew on some stem lines and created some uh, regular feathers and use the same ruler that you mentioned, Marianne, mm -hmm. to quilt the straight guide. lines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then another quilt that I brought along for you to see was made by Sharon Meisenheimer, a quilter in Johnston, Iowa. And Sharon made that pattern from a Ca uh, Pat Campbell design. Yes, Jacobian yeah. applique. Jacobian yes. applique, mm -hmm. exactly. Well, her setting left lots of open space in between, and I had a blast quilting all sorts of designs like these funky feathers inside those quilting areas. And the great thing is with those adjustable handles, I could get control and get in and out of every those single bit spaces. of those applique yeah. pedals. Oh, yes. Without stitching on them. Without stitching on them. Exactly. Wow. It's one of those things that you find that the inspiration strikes you and you can have a great time. I think we should applaud her quilts. Yep. They're beautiful. Yay. Yay. Thank you. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us today. Yes. Thank you. So much fun. So I hope you learned something new. Oh, have a great time. Yeah. Get that quilt mailed off to your daughter. Oh, yes. It's going out today. All right. It's got to get there. It's got to get to New York. Thank you. Great. Bye. See you, everybody. Bye-bye. Our next guest has been featured on PBS's Quilt Central and HGTV's Simply Quilts with Alex Anderson. She's written The Secrets of Elemental Quilting and Mastering the Art of McTavishing, which might give you a clue as to who she is. Let's hear it for Karen McTavish. Yay, Karen! Hi. Hello. Hi, Karen. Congratulations. Hey, Karen. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much. Great to have you. Thanks for having me here. That's great. Well, Karen, you're going to tell us a little bit about one of the most important advantages you see with the American Professional Quilting System oh, machine. There's so many great 
different options on these machines that sets them apart. Um, you know, first of all, you know, Don talked about the belt drive, and and you know, my favorite thing about the Millennium and the APQS machine is the stitches. You know, because that's really that's what important. it's all about, isn't right. it? Right. <laughs> you want to look really good, and the stitch regulated. APQS machines, I feel, are the finest stitch regular machines on the market. Um, what they have, let's just okay, go around okay, real all quick. Right. Okay. Um, what they have, we call it the smart bobbin, and the smart bobbin is like a domestic machine, where a domestic machine has the small bobbins, right? Yeah. And this is a pre-wound, yeah. and, and, <laughs> and it just, you know, it's loaded with thread. A smart bobbin is just like the domestic machines where, you know, the bigger, larger bobbins, um, they, they call it the m size bobbins, they create this inertia. You know, we talk about movement. Uh, you know, when we move the machine, it keeps moving. Mm -hmm. Inertia is kind of the same thing, you know. Uh, the needle bar is moving at a certain speed. Well, the bobbin, you know, goes twice as fast. So sometimes if you have too big of a bobbin, you get a loop. Mm -hmm. Or the thread kind of bubbles up on the top, and you have bad tension. Um, the the smart bobbin will prevent all that. So well, really, set that bobbin down so we can kind of sure. take a take a look at it. And uh, I know that tension and stitch quality mm -hmm. was one of the main things that motivated you to switch brands of long arm machines to <sighs> switch to an APQS, which you feel is a way better machine. Right. I went on a on a mission to find the best stitch regulator on the market because my I'll be honest judges were calling me on my inconsistent stitches and I had a stitch regulated machine when I switched to APQS that completely stopped and I, I just it makes me look better than I actually am well so that smart bobbin helps you know think no, about no. that bobbin I was just thinking as Karen was explaining is you'd think a bigger bobbin would be an advantage because it would hold more thread and really you know the, 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 yeah, the there, it's kind of a trade-off there ain't no such thing as a free lunch no you know right yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, there's a trade-off somewhere. Yeah. And I love, you know, you mentioned pre-wound, which is great because you can buy mm -hmm. whole packages of pre-wound mm -hmm. bobbins, so you don't have to stop quilting. You just put another one in. Yep, it's so really we've got fast. a great stitch regulator. We've got that smart bobbin. And what happens with Which that, helps with tension. Yeah, and then you have the ability to run any thread you'd like. You know, the decorative, beautiful threads you see out there, the variegated threads, the poly threads. We even um, run 100-weight silk thread in the tiny little oh, spools from ooh, the back. That's amazing. And because of the disc... On this machine, it right. will handle that? Well, I'm, you know, I don't like to program VCRs and stuff like that. You know, I just want it to be easy. Mm -hmm. Do and any so, of us like to do that? Well, you no. know, no. It's, it looks big and intimidating, mm -hmm. but it's not. It's just really simple thread guides. And this just is um, really easy to adjust. Let's say I want to use a really heavy cotton thread. I can just tweak it a little bit, and, and it's by feel. You can feel that oh. it, if it's going to break or not. And then you can tighten it up if you, you know, are using a thinner thread. So, so is it it's the just, same old righty tighty lefty loosey kind of concept. Yeah, right? it's about feel, and you get to know your machine really fast. So by feel, you mean how easily you can pull the thread through the needle? I feel like if it's gonna if, if it's gonna break, you back it off. If you feel like it's gonna break through yeah. the needle, back it oh, off. Okay. I'm gonna use that myself. You know, I can understand that. You'll get to know your machine in three days. You know, you just you'll know um, how it feels when you pull the thread through. So if it's a really thick thread, it's really easy to back it off. If it's thin, you just tighten it up a little. Um, there's no, um, you know, magic trick to this. It's just not, it's not hard at all. So the combination of the stitch regulator, the smart bobbin, and the tension adjustment, which is easy to get to, helps you get a really fine stitch quality, which was mm -hmm. one of your goals in duplicating the look of hand quilting. Right. And, and just to add another thing, um, I really wanted customer service. I just wanted that in mm -hmm. my life. And they're there for me. For you mm -hmm. know, it's The first year it was operator error, I'll admit. You know? <laughs> yeah, but that's yeah. really when you need somebody and, to talk to. But it's still nice that they're there. I really don't call them at all. But they walk me through any problem I had You know, when I first got the machine. And it was always usually me. So. Mm -hmm. Well, and, but then that's good to know, and, and they probably can answer those questions right away because they've heard it before with other first-year owners. Mm -hmm. And really, I know when my computer won't work or I have a, mm -hmm. the light was out on my sewing machine, we don't want to stop our love of quilting mm -hmm. and what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And any ways there are to help us continue moving forward, 
that is a huge benefit. Well, I went through a representative, and um, she was available to me 24-7, phone call away, email away. Wow. It was really wow. a nice That's... personal relationship. As much as your family loves you, I feel like I'm a part of this this new APQ. Well, well, and your family yeah. can't fix your machine for you. You're well, a family. I'm, yeah, you pretty much, yeah, you need to give them a call. You know, I don't really have any problems. It's a couple of oil drops, and that's about it for maintenance. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, you want to demonstrate a little bit? Sure. Yeah. You're I'm, so famous for your McTavishing. Would, I, you, would you do some of sure, that? Because I'd like to see. love to. Um, I've looked at your book, but I'd like to see you actually do it. I'm going to show you non-stitch non regulated and stitch regulated. So this is non-stitch regulated mode, and I like to go a little faster. And non-stitch regulated mode means you kind of got to... Um, Watch your speed of your machine so you don't get big, giant toenail pickers, is what yeah. I call them. You know, big yeah, stitches. that's a little too big. Judges kind of like to see consistent stitches. So this is what a, you know, and my flow is really easy. Um, I can, my curves are really natural when I'm using mm -hmm. the non-stitch regulated mode. And you don't have a death grip on those handles. You're just it's lightly the lightest touch, mm -hmm. which helps for um, shoulder issues in the future, you, you know, like you don't, you're not in pain. Aren't you impressed? You can talk while she's yeah, doing Yeah, yeah, I usually have to kind of, I can talk during most things, but yeah. <laughs> mm, I got to concentrate on this, yeah. but you know, I'm getting better all the time. So the McTavishing is, is an, the name that has sort of grown up around the style of quilting that you do. Um, it, it's just an alternative to stippling. Okay. You know that meandering? Yeah. It turned into stippling and then it turned into micro stippling. So it, it's just a good background filler that's fun and it creates movement behind applique. I'm going to show you the stitch regulated mode. Okay. And that's now, when you hear the little bird chirping. Yes. Yeah. We love that bird. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the judges' critiques on on McTavishing said, Machine Quilter appears to be having way too much fun quilting this quilt. <laughs> oh, that's cute. I that's couldn't really tell cute. if that yeah, was, you know. That's a great judge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, I can just show you a couple of things up on the wall Yeah, there. you brought yeah, some quilts. Okay. Let's take a look. Um, I, I love to traditionally quilt, and I love to, um, I actually love hand quilting. That's my first passion. I, I want to look like a hand quilter no matter what. And so what I like to do is trick people, yeah. make them think that oh, that's hand quilted, but actually it's on a long arm. And then, mm -hmm. and, um, and what I get is I, I just feel like, um, if I look like a hand quilter, I get the respect that yes. machine quilting deserves. Just exactly. Yeah, so. With machine quilting, mm -hmm. you can do such intricate things, and the amount of quilting that you can put in a quilt is staggering. Mm -hmm. And unless you've got your nose right against your quilt, Karen, you, it, it, looks look, it looks like a classic, from here. a classic whole cloth with, is it shadow trapunto? Mm -hmm. or? Yeah, it's colored yeah, trapunto. Color yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just yeah. absolutely oh, stunning. And it, I, I love the idea of someone going up there, maybe a non-quilter, and going up and say, oh, now here's a hand-quilted quilt. I have, you I, have know? A, I have the greatest story. I it was at the Minnesota State Fair. It won the Best to Show Sweeps. Yay! 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 And, um, you know how um, when you're in the quilting industry, sometimes you hang out and listen to mm -hmm. people's comments or you send the kid in so the kid yeah. can hear it and then mm -hmm. they repeat it. Um, I don't do it anymore because one time my daughter came back and she said, uh, what does convoluted mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's not so good. No, no. And so basically um, I was listening to a mother-daughter fight over, you know, oh, look at that hand-quilted quilt. It's amazing. It's beautiful. And she goes, Mom, it's, it says Best Machine Quilting. She goes, oh, no, that's a hand-quilted quilt. And she said, no, look, Best Machine Quilting. And, and she said, oh, never mind. You knew you and made so it. You reached at, your goal. Well, well, at that point, I was new in the you know, quilting world, and so at that point, I said, I'm going to make every quilt I do look like a hand-quilted quilt. Yeah, and so and I can achieve that on a long arm, no problem. So part of that, that what you went for, is that great stitch quality that makes it look hand quilted, and you found that great mm -hmm. stitch quality on the APQS long arm machines. Absolutely, you can control it. Yeah. Well, let's look at your yeah. other quilt that you brought. Oh, it's just it's an applique quilt. It's more um, innovative, and more non traditional, but it incorporates that McTavishing in the background filler. And um, I gave it to my sister in law, and she gave it back to me because the borders made her um, sick to her stomach. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, you always have yeah, one in the family. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it just goes to show that you can take traditional applique motifs mm -hmm. and you can stitch around those with stitch the control in the ditch, yeah. that you have yeah. to get around those applique pieces and fill in those backgrounds and really duplicate the look 
of hand quilting. My, mo on my motto, my motto is, what would a hand quilter do? Do the hardest thing, and never take a shortcut. Well, That's all yeah. one motto. That is a yeah. heck of a great yeah. motto. Yeah, well, thanks I'm so impressed. Much. That's for so coming great. Thank you, thank, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's sensational, Karen. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me. It Thanks. was great. Mm -hmm. It was you. great. Thank, Thank you. you. Our next guest has produced award-winning quilts with APQS machines since 1991. She has appeared on over 50 quilting television shows, including our own TV show. And she has taught long arm techniques for over 10 years in the United States, Canada, Australia, and Japan. Here she is, Marilyn Badger. <laughs> It's good to have it's you. fun to quilt with you. I'm glad to be back. Now, Marianne, I think that you have earned your master's degree in long arm machine quilting. Really? Anybody no. that can put a quilt on, get it quilted in two hours, take it off last night, bring it in here, put the binding on yeah, backstage, up. <laughs> and to get it ready to go to UPS when we get finished, has earned her stripes. So, Woo! welcome. <laughs> I'm so proud. That's great. Now, I think we should all see this quilt, don't you? I agree. I think we all need right. to see it. All right. Here. Okay. I'm going to check over the quality of the workmanship. Well, oh, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll be quality control I, here. I'm not proud of every single... Uh, Oh, yeah, but gosh, it looks great, Marianne. Look at that. That's Isn't that beautiful? for my yeah. daughter's boyfriend. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh. Two hours? Is that what you said? Well, I'd say two or three. Well, time right. flies when, nice. you have yes. when there's nothing like a deadline to get you oh, motivated. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. We all no, have deadlines, so we know what that's about. All I think that's one of the main reasons for having quilt shows. Yeah. is uh, <laughs> so that it gives us a deadline work? to, you know, and holidays like Christmas right. and birthdays and weddings. I always tell people if they're going to make a quilt for a wedding, you know, or for graduation, if you're going to do it for graduation, it's not bad to start with your, when your kids are freshmen. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> if you really want to hedge your bet. And I have one that I started, let's see, my daughter's senior year of college, and she is now finishing her fourth year of med school. <laughs> and uh, I still have to piece the top, so I imagine I will be long arm quilting it in May for her graduation. Well, or maybe it can be for her daughter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's what I say. It takes a long time to finish a quilt when you're not working on it. Right. That's yeah. Really That's so, for Marilyn, sure. you are going to show us some great techniques. So, yes. what impresses you the most? Should we just go on back to the machines so and well, show us? Sure. And, I, you know, when I first started researching long arm machines, and I'm not going to say how many years ago that was, forget it. <laughs> but um, I had my husband go with me up to Quilt Market, and we checked them all out. And of course, he's an engineer, so I figured he would know what's mm -hmm. good. One of the first things that are major things that we zeroed in about these machines was the track system. And we felt that it was far superior to anything else out there, and it's totally unique to APQS machines. Explain and, how that works. I mean, okay, what's, what's we're that? probably going to have system? to go back over here on this side okay. so you can okay. see. All right. Okay. Uh, the track system is how the machine rides on the table and on the carriage. So when your machine is is uh, moving this way, the wheels on the uh, that attach to the table that controls your horizontal right. motion. The wheels that are on the carriage controls your vertical motion. So they these wheels the ride time. horizontally. Yeah. They are locked into that track. So when I take the, the handles back here and I try to rock it around, it doesn't rock. It stays solid. Right. Yeah. I knew right then and there it wasn't going to vibrate. Yeah. And those wheels are adjustable. So when you set your machine up, if it feels tight, if, if you can take a finger and push it like that and it keeps coasting, it's great. If it doesn't, then you adjust the wheels, loosen it up a little bit so that it rolls around with you because you want to be able to accomplish those nice sweeping curves in your patterns or smaller sweeping uh -huh. curves in your freehand yeah. motion. Those little well, that's tight good ones. to know. So Very good. Now, the other thing that, that is really important to me, since I was kind of gravitating toward competition quilting, that's, I, I love to do that. That's just a real challenge, yes. and it's fun to have your quilts out there. And uh, even if you don't win, it's wonderful to be oh, in yeah. amongst the competition. Yeah, but you're a winner yeah. very often. Well, <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I realized that there are certain things you cannot do on a long arm without a stitch regulator. It's really important to have in terms of doing those uh, intricate little outlines of appliques, uh, very tiny little 
designs that you'd place on a quilt and uh, you know sometimes you can't see them that well and so you need to be able to go slow around those. Right, and just stop and take a breath and for that right. super fine work. As well as those stitching in the ditch. That we do, yeah. uh, any, any kind of guide work when you're holding a guide yep. you know you used to have My to favorite push technique. the off button. <laughs> yeah. Well and you only have so many hands and yeah. right? the stitch regulator gives you that minute to think without having to punch the button and go That's right. right away. And the beauty of this stitch regulator is when I stop, it stops instantly. Mm -hmm. When I go, it goes. It doesn't have to catch up with me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sit there and stitch up and down while I'm sitting there not wanting it to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I can get much more precision, much, much finer work for the competitions these days that you have to have because you know <laughs> they get a magnifying glass yes. on oh, yeah. so. really tough. Yeah. <laughs> you judge between two perfect quilts sometimes. Right, and right. You have to look for something wrong so you can pick one of the other. Mm -hmm. And many of the winning quilts in a lot of the big shows are stitched on a the QS machine. Oh, yes, they are. Lots of award winners. We've really broken that barrier. Well, you, like you say, you have just the aesthetic quality of your quilts. It just continues to rise, and a lot of it is because of the features that you have on this machine. Right, and even after, you know, and I'm, okay, 16 years <laughs> I've been doing this. <laughs> okay. Even, <laughs> even after... Even after that length of time, I still see improvement all the time. Mm -hmm. So you're still learning the whole time you have a machine. It doesn't matter how long you've had it. You just, go, you just get better. You just want to get that's better. That's right. You get more comfortable. And that's the thing about the machines. You need to be really comfortable. You need to be relaxed. The more relaxed you are, the more uh, comfortable you are, the more confident you are, the easier it gets. Well, show us some of your techniques. Because okay. you're always breaking new ground with designs, with use of thread with innovative attachments and I always love to see. Well I usually that. work with uh, variegated thread so mm -hmm. I'm going to run around there and, okay. and tie thread. on another thread. Yeah well that you know that's neat because that's the way I thread a machine is tie, tie off the... That's right see what you do you just, just break, one. break this beauty and you can set it right over here on this spindle for later. Put this one right here. It's and the old serger trick. <laughs> tie a knot and pull it through right it'll go right on through the eye of the needle if the thread is not too big. Yeah because it is a, is a larger needle and uh, I think it's great how you can just thread a needle by pulling the thread through. All right. There yeah, it just keep coming. It's coming. There you Slow go. Down. Came right through the needle. Oh, that's always Nothing good when to that it. happens. Yeah, we want to see this. See, I like bright threads. No, I've always liked really? bright threads. No. Really? Sure? <laughs> and fabrics. And I usually stitch on about 11 stitches per inch. That's just something I like. And so uh, I'm going to set my needle down and bring it up to bring my thread up to the top, like Dawn says. She's right on there. You need to have your threads up at the top so that you don't get a little boo-boo on the back. And when I'm doing competition quilts, which is basically all I do anymore, I don't do a start and a stop. I just set the needle down and go and knot and bury every one of those. So I'm going to turn my stitch regulator on, and I'm, I'll show you a little feather that I developed for Yellowbird, which is the quilt I'm going to show today. We're going to look at that later, too. And so I started out by just kind of doing a little zigzag back and forth because I, I kind of think that tied in with his wings. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to do a little feather. We go this way for a while, maybe about three or so. Get a nice long one there, and then I come over here on this side and go from that direction and fill that in with the feather. Get a little bit smaller right there in the middle, maybe one right there. Now I'm going to echo that and come right back around to the other side. You see how easy I, I'm using a couple of fingers and uh, just no no strain at all. But I notice like if you if you weren't sure where you wanted to go next. With the you stitch bag you later on, you can mm -hmm. stop, you can think, you yeah, can look. Yeah, you got lots of time to think. And without it, you just got you got to keep going. Mm -hmm. Right now, so here I'm going to do another little zigzag like that, and I kind of went up with his. These are kind of like bird tails. <laughs> then I change directions like that. I love watching you because you really are drawing with your needle. You know, you're, you bring this artistry that is uh, really fun to watch. Well, I do a lot of drawing on paper. Uh, before I ever stitch. And with Claudia's quilts, Claudia, Claudia is my partner and very good friend uh, that I join up with for competition pieces. And she does these fabulous one-of-a-kind designs. And they're always really interesting and unique. And I have to develop things that go into really interesting and unique areas. It's so. the best kind of challenge, isn't it? Yes. And so I draw, I put paper down on them and trace out those areas and draw to fill in so that I've got an idea of where to go when I step up to the machine. So you're going to plan how you fill those spaces before you actually start stitching. Oh, yes. And thought of that. When, I, when my children were in 4-H, the, the kind of the test rule in teaching them how to sew was 
if we didn't think it was going to fall apart, we kept going. Yes. <laughs> and, and I think that's important sometimes, too, is to remember that you get better at things by doing oh, yeah. it and not by worrying about it. Right. And so there's nothing like practice. There's nothing like... You know, borrow, get some of those friends from, our quilts from your friends and your relatives and use those to practice on. Yeah. You know, they're, they're not going to pay you anyway. Or make a few <laughs> of your own as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And some of your own things that are like, hmm, not so good. Okay. <laughs> that is true trade-off. But right. when you take that quilt off the machine, when it's on there, you know every flaw that's mm -hmm. there. But yes. when it comes off, you don't ever, you can, I challenge you to find them. Well, my quilt we showed, there's a few, you know, we're kind of bobbling, I thought, Brian is not ever going to notice those. <laughs> He's just going to snuggle under that quilt and be right. happy. He'll well, I fine. thought you did well. And if the fact that Marilyn is awarding you a long-arm quilting degree is pretty right. great. I'd be happy with an undergraduate degree. Yeah. You know, I'll, take I'll take anything. Yeah, I think that's pretty fantastic. So. Okay, so, any other techniques you want to show us? Well, let's see. I'll show you... I can show you my badger blossom, which is very similar. Or I can do a little Mediterranean beauty feather. That's a feather from a quilt that... That was our very first quilt that we had in competition, and I developed it to uh, fill in a background area. And once I've done it, it, it can almost look like it's done on a computer, you know, when you do it a few times. But I, I did fill up an entire big sheet of newsprint with it, put it up on my wall and looked, looked at it, you know, as if it were a design that I wanted to find out you know, if there were any areas that I got too close to my previous stitching or had areas that were empty that needed work. And when I had, had done that, I was ready to put the fabric on and do it on a machine without marking oh, anything. Yeah. That's beautiful, and I love how that thread looks. The thread really makes it. And you can, if you want it to stand out even more, I can run two threads through the same needle, oh, yeah. make it a little bit thicker. Or use a heavier thread. Right. Or if you had, you wanted to get several colors together that you don't have in a variegation, then you pick those colors and put them together and run them together. I think you did that on one of our shows one time, put double thread mm -hmm. through there. That was cool. Right. Awesome. Well, I'm always amazed by how your quilting looks when, when we just look at it on a piece of fabric like this. But what always totally fascinates me is how you integrate that into your quilts. So can you show us how you've applied some of your techniques on quilts? I would be delighted. On? Which one are you going to show us first? I'm going to show you my very favorite of all time that we've done together, the one that I developed the bird feathers for, <laughs> and that's yellow bird. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's the one yeah. over here. Yes, and that is Claudia's original design. It's like a curvy piece to feathered star. That's very Claudia difficult. Myers. Claudia yes. Myers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, when she sent it to me, this is how you can kind of develop your quilting for a quilt that a customer gives you. She sent it to me and said, all of those little yellow spiky things in there reminded her of bird's, bird's wings. Mm -hmm. So then I went into research on birds, and I didn't want to do just a typical bird. I wanted it to be kind of mythical or whimsical or whatever. So I drew up my bird and actually made a template on the freezer paper. I put my freezer paper on the canvases, took out, uh, put an MR5 needle in, which is a size 20, mm -hmm. and stitched through the paper and made a stencil. And then oh. I just pounced it where I wanted the birds. Cool. And the yeah. second quilt I have is Casablanca. It was just recently featured on the cover of Quilter's Newsletter magazine. And the exciting thing about that quilt is uh, a group over in Saudi Arabia saw the article that, t that little corner block up there is their guild logo. Oh, that's and neat. they fell in love with the quilt, and now we have 50 ladies in Saudi Arabia making that quilt. Wow. So that's exciting. We're anxious to see them all. Oh, that's very neat. Uh, and that is a paper piece pineapple. It's her original design again. Uh, I actually drew everything out, those, all the patterns in that quilt that are stitched, were drawn on golden threads, paper, mm -hmm. and stitched through. So, so then you tear the you stitch through the paper yes. and then you tear the paper away. And it was a bear getting all that paper out of there. <laughs> yeah, you cry. The <laughs> yes. Yeah, but you well, can be real exact with your quilt. Yes, because it was turpuntoed and I wanted those mm -hmm. feathers just so because there's some unique areas there I had to shape them around too. Well, and I've I've found even when I'm trying to follow design the, the freedom with which you can move the machine it lets you really guide it very very accurately. And the fact that you can move the handles. Mm -hmm. Down to get your hands closer to the quilt. The closer helps the quilt, me a the better. More accurate. It's, it's like someone said earlier today, holding the yeah. end of a pencil and trying oh, to draw, yeah. or getting your hand down by the right. lead. 
And this way you can bring your hands down to that level and really control when you're wanting to follow an intricate pattern. Right. At one point, we used to be at a disadvantage because our hands had to be up here. And so the sewing machine quilters could get more precision. Oh, now we're well, down there, too. So, uh -huh. Aha. <laughs> Marilyn, you've revealed how long you've been long arming, but I know you also... Uh, use another kind of APQS machine for some of the work that you I do. I do. It's a neat machine. I may have to build an addition to get another yeah. one in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like well, Show us what you've okay. been learning on the George, because I know this is this is kind of new for you. Yes. To be sitting down to quilt and guiding it with your hands rather than with the machine. Yeah, and it's, it's a totally different motion than, than what you've done for so long because you're moving the fabric rather than the needle. That's it. Mm -hmm. And your brain has to think differently. You wouldn't think so, but it's totally different because I can do feathers upside down, right side up, side ways up there without thinking, I have to think here. <laughs> oh, so that's, it's good for you. <laughs> yeah. Practice with this will help too. That's mm -hmm. right. Now, I, this has a foot pedal control, and so when I step on it, it starts out really slowly, and then it'll, be, it'll go faster as I push down. So it's not anything that you have to freak out over and go fast. Uh, it has a speed control up here, and I'm going to dial it in about eight. Okay. And as I step down on the pedal, it'll start going. And the further I step down, the faster it'll go. So you want to you want to build up a speed that's comfortable to you, and you just want to quilt to a rhythm. Uh, you don't want to put too much pressure on the on the machine with your hands. It's the quilt moves around really nicely on this Lexan top, so there's right. no hanging up. You got all this nice throat space, and all you do is relax, turn on some music, and quilt away. Wow, the what? person that's used to the quilting this way on your home machine mm -hmm. would probably be in seventh heaven. Oh, yeah. Well, everyone's complaint is handling a large quilt and not having enough space mm -hmm. in the throat of the machine. And here you have, you know, that full length. Right. You can get a big quilt in there with no problem. You have lots of table to work on. It really sets you up well. Oh, yeah. And it has a needle up, needle down. So when I stop, I can set my needle down, or I can raise it up like that. Yeah. Oh, I this love This light, that. you can yeah. position anywhere on here, so you've got great light. Yeah. And see great. quilt in the, in the dark room, like watch TV and, and see your quilt. Yeah, and yeah I like to see that quilting. Well, I know. You <laughs> actually listen to tunes, though. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I'm and I think that's much. a great tip that Marilyn has shared with us, is the idea that you can... You know, put some music on and get the rhythm of that music, and that will help you quilt it does. more evenly. Mm -hmm. And just relax your mind. Yeah. It's great. Yep. You know, you might, you might, if you're doing something uh, very intricate, you might want a slow song. Yes. Yeah. 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 And if you're stippling, you really want a boogie. Yeah. Get That's it going. That's right. With the, with yeah. the oldies but goodies. Well, Marilyn, it has been so much fun having you here today, sharing your quilts and your techniques. Thanks. It's been great to be here. Well, there's another world-famous quilter who uses an APQS George for certain types of sit-down quilting. And that's Ricky Timms, who recently appeared on our TV program, Love of Quilting. Let's watch a little bit of it. It's a lot of fun to have you here, Ricky. Thank you. <clears throat> well, we have kind of a different machine, don't we? Mm -hmm. This is a different machine. It's, uh, it's just recently available for quilters, but... Uh, I, I'm sure that your audience looks at this and probably thinks of it as perhaps a long arm quilting machine, which is, of course, a machine that you manipulate the machine, and mm -hmm. a lot of quilters use that. But a lot of people like to work on a tabletop, mm -hmm. and this is based on a long arm machine, except it has been set down and mounted into a cabinet. So today, it's still going to be free motion. I'm going to be moving the quilt, and the machine is going to stay stationary. So the, it's essentially like work, quilting on your home sewing machine, but you have a lot larger work area. That's the best mm -hmm. advantage of this machine mm -hmm. is you've got a lot of area, but it is just strictly for machine quilting, quilting. free motion machine okay. quilting. The first exercise that I'm going to do is I'm going to do lowercase mm -hmm. cursive E's. We've all heard of those, haven't we? Absolutely. We've all we written them. learned mm -hmm. how to do those in grade school. So I'm just going to start by stitching... And I want these to be about two inches tall. One of the tendencies that I see students doing in class is they'll go fast and then slow. Mm -hmm. Fast and then slow. And you can see immediately, as soon as I did that, how the stitches became uneven. Now I'm going to stitch over because I've got another letter that I'm going to do that is a little bit more difficult. Just move over. And this is the lowercase 
cursive C, a lowercase c. And so I'm going to let this go over, and now I have to backtrack on top to do this. Now, anyone that has done machine quilted feathers will know that in most cases you go back over some stitching. So this so is great practice. This is great practice for doing that kind of stitching. Well, I see what you're saying is that rather than starting to learn to machine quilt by doing a shape that you've never done before, do a shape that you have done before. Absolutely. Now, I'm going to move on with another little exercise that I really like. I call this ribbon candy. You remember mm. the Christmas sure. candies that twist mm -hmm. back on themselves? Mm -hmm. Now, it's a little bit more complicated than the previous two, but that's what we're doing. We're growing all right, Building, with our yeah. exercises. And on this particular exercise, it's sort of like driving over making a loop and coming back and touching the previous one. It's not quite like a figure eight, but it feels a little bit like a figure eight. Looks fun. Actually, it's a pretty quilting design. You could do this up a, a border. On the grand border. Yeah. yeah. All right, so this is Christmas candy. And notice, I mean, it's, you gotta go kind of halfway up and back over. And you have a light touch on your fabric, uh, yeah, too. Yeah, and notice my hands are just starting to get too far away. So you stop? I stop, I stop absolutely stop. Mm -hmm. And and I stopped right where that stitch is going to come down and, and touch this other one because that's a better hiding spot. Mm -hmm. A forgiving Try, spot. Yeah, for a it's good. not way outside on a loop. So stop in a spot like that and then move your hands before. That's uh, a great tip. And then continue on from there. The simplest things sometimes help us so much. Yeah. Now, the reason I like this ribbon candy is because a lot of quilters still have trouble with doing stipple quilting. I mean, mm -hmm. they just, they get lost in the meander. Mm -hmm. Well, this particular exercise takes them on that journey of doing what I call peninsulas and coves. So that is, you're creating a peninsula, but then you're making a cove. Oh, right. And it doesn't have to just keep going you know, side to side, it can go up and down and so forth, and always twisting and winding. And so this is the predecessor for opening that up and starting to do stipple type quilting. It doesn't go back and touch itself. And you know what? I always have quilters ask, oh, well, stipple quilting is not ever, ever supposed to cross over itself. Well, you know, on maybe something this big, it's not supposed to, but that word supposed to bothers me anyway because it means there's a rule. And I'm, you know me, I'm very uh, anti-rules when it comes to quilting. So if you accidentally, oops, stitch over, is that... Is that going to be really the end of the world? The quilt police are not going to arrest you. Absolutely. No. Sometimes I've found if I make one mistake, I'm better off to make that mistake again. <laughs> Which is easy so to that do. So it looks like I plan to do it. Well, would I, you quilt a feather design abs for us? Absolutely. I want to do a free motion feather for you. I'm going to come over, and I'm going to start this feather up at the tip of the feather. I'm going okay. to do a feather, and I'm going to come down. A little curvy feather would be all right. And then begin stitching. Now, of course, remember, it's easy to accidentally miss going over that line. If I were using a more matching thread, you wouldn't notice that as easily, but we're using a bright yellow thread here today so that the quilters can easily see the stitches on the television. Now I've come, worked my way back down, and I'm coming up on the other side. I find that building a feather is much easier if you do it from the bottom to the top. Also, I don't think that every plume has to be the same size. As a matter of fact, you know I just did a small one and then a little larger one. Sort of gives it a more organic feel, looks a little more fun, and it looks less mathematically planned. Well, so right. Mm -hmm. right. And, and if you're trying to make them all the same, then people might notice when they weren't. But if you intentionally make them different... It's fine. It looks beautiful in the quilt. And I have a lot, I have a lot of fun doing these. Um, I, uh, that was improvisational. That was not marked. And you and I both know that marking a quilt is one of the most stressful, challenging parts of it. So anytime you don't have to mark the quilt, and you can imagine with a feather like this, if right. all you marked was like the spine on a border, 
and then just came back and just free motioned your loops, it would really look beautiful. Well, marking stressful, but taking the marks out can be even more <laughs> stressful. Those, those are great ways to practice. So we hope everybody's going to get a, their sandwich out and practice free motion quilting with these uh, very simple step-by-step -step processes. Well, that was Ricky Timms. He can do some truly amazing things with his George machine. Liz, let's quickly review the exclusive combination of features that make American Professional Quilting Systems long arm machines the finest in the world. At the beginning of this program, we mentioned the easy to control quilting head. Then we discussed the full support from APQS, advice, setup, training, servicing, and financing. We mentioned that APQS machines are American-made by American craftspeople. And we said that the quilting head is made of welded aircraft-quality aluminum for less vibration and weight. Then we brought out our guests. They explained that the trouble-free, synchronous belt drive is quieter. They told us that the ergonomic handles change position for greater comfort and that the self-lubricating bushings never need to be oiled. They talked about the superiority of the APQS stitch regulator and how it ensures uniform stitch quality. They also explained that the APQS smart bobbin helps provide perfect stitches. And finally, they showed us the horizontal wheels and track system. They said it absorbs vibration, prevents binding, and is quieter. Those features are fantastic and they're unequaled from any other maker of long arm machines. Liz, I wonder, let's see if we have a question from the audience. Any questions, anybody? Oh, I see some hands going up. Oh, yeah. I see somebody I'm going to ask okay. right over here. Just bounce right up here. First of all, can you tell us your name and where you're from, and then you get to ask your question. Okay. I'm Kathy Anderson. I'm from Des Moines. Yay! Okay. Yay! <laughs> Thanks for coming today, Kathy. Oh, it's been really fun. Um, I would really like to buy one of these machines, but I understand they cost quite a bit. Mm -hmm. How can I convince my husband, Bob, that I should really buy one of these? Well, I've met your husband, Bob, and actually he's a pushover. <laughs> but we're going to show you how all, any of you can convince your husband of that. So it's a very, very good question. It's probably one that a lot of you have been thinking about as you've been sitting here watching how wonderful these machines are. And starting to have the yin for right, the machine. One. Yes. It's actually very easy to it's make this easy. work. And in order to answer that question, we'd like to introduce someone who knows something about protecting his resources, like your husbands do, about protecting his money as well as his clothing. Yes. A He's man, got a real problem yes, with that. Yes, a man who's literally given the shirt off his back for our quilts, and a man who came to take such great interest in quilting that APQS even named a machine after him, the one you just saw Ricky Timms demonstrating on in that clip from video, you guessed it. Who's here? It's George. George. Hi. Let's hear it for George. George. All right. Hi. Hey, George. Yeah. George. Nice to see you. Good George. to see a man here. Hey, George. There you are. You got a nice black one. Green. Orange. Pink. Oh, this is fun. Hi, George. Hi, 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 hi. You're getting to be quite a celebrity. I know. I've noticed that when I've been places where you were, and, you know, people look, they see Marianne, and they see me, and they go, oh, there's Marianne, Liz, and they go, oh, it's George. You Get know, to sign. So you hurt my wrist signing all those yes. autographs. Oh, but it's cool. Oh, it's tough. Yeah. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. You guys have had a great show. A APQS machine. Just wonderful. And I bet you're all just dying to try these machines out, to have them in your home. Yeah. yeah. But I bet you're all concerned about affording these machines as well. Got a little secret. You can afford an APQS machine when you turn your hobby into a long-lasting source of income. It's a tremendous opportunity for you because there's a tremendous demand all across our country for finishing quilts. You can do it. Everybody's got tops. We've all got tops. <laughs> That's right. In fact... <laughs> A survey of quilt shops shows that $150 is about what they charge to finish a queen-size quilt with a fairly simple design. And they've got a backlog of people waiting to get their quilts in to get them quilted. Huge demand. You know, I'm not very good at math, but, but let's just suppose that you can finish a couple of quilts every week 
for the quilters in the area, and that should take, well, probably about a day. Take you about a day to do a couple of quilts. Right. One hundred fifty dollars. Come on. Easy ones are good money maker. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's right. That's right. So, that means in a matter of a couple of years, you will have made enough money to afford one of these top of the line machines, the APQS Millennium. And you can have it while you're working on it. And, and even better, you're not going to put all of the money towards the purchase of the machine. You're going to be able to invest in some stash for yourself. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. You know, George, everyone that I have met, you know, who's kind of figured out, they've built a timetable how long it will take them to pay for the machine, has, has usually done that in about half to three quarters of the time that's scheduled because they get so fired up and so excited to be quilting on that machine that they just quilt day and night and they've got that machine paid for in no time at all. That's all right. And you know, I, I heard you talking with Dawn earlier and she mentioned how she has this uh, thing with Love her Love affair going. And, and the time just flies by. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. It's so much fun to do. Well, and I think we actually, I tell people all the time, we sort of have a duty. You know, there are all these quilt tops that are not quilts yet. And the more we can encourage people to long arm them, to find someone to long arm, to become a long armer yourself, then those become quilts. You know, Certainly. we mail a quilt top in the batting in the back off. We don't insure it extra. When it's coming back, $500. <laughs> <laughs> well, and what's wonderful is APQS make a full line of quilting right. machines, including the George, <laughs> which is very cool that there's the, a machine after you. The like sit-down guy. You know, yeah. and obviously the less expensive machines pay for themselves faster than the higher-priced ones, and you can make that decision whether you're going to start out and work your way up or whether you're just going to jump in with both feet, get the top of the line, all the bells and whistles, and... Have a great time. Let, let's say you, you've finished paying for your machine. Mm -hmm. Then you know what happens? Money goes in your pocket. Yeah. No. And, you know, that that's always, and that impresses husbands. Does that impress you, George? I, I must admit that I had some trepidation when my wife uh, bought her first quilting machine. But it was paid for, and now it's money into our family. Mm -hmm. A yeah. significant investment. Your husbands talk about return on investment, and some of you who are financial, you might talk about return on investment. What you put into the machine and what you get back. It's right here. Let's you can do it. Let's see him, see him do that with a set of golf clubs. That, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, ladies. All right. All right. They're a great investment, wonderful for your family. In fact, my wife bought hers when she was a stay-at-home mom, something that she could do when our daughter was at school and be there when she got home. It was a great investment and really made a difference, I know, in our family income. Yeah. Well, George, you've done a wonderful job explaining it, and, and we want to thank you for loaning us the, that wonderful yeah. plaid fabric from yeah. your shirt. <laughs> you know, I don't need, I don't. You've really always been really a good sport. A and, good provider. Uh, I don't think we'll have to take any more fabric today. Oh, from thank you. you. Yeah. I appreciate so we'll that. <laughs> <laughs> so soon you'll be able to put a message on your answering machine or cell phone that says you've gone quilting with APQS. Well, you've seen four famous long-arm quilters at work and looked at their beautiful quilts, plus George showed you how an APQS machine can pay for itself. Right. The next step for all of you is to find out more. To get started, call 800-426-7233, toll-free, or visit our website at apqs.com. Marianne and I will be there to greet you and welcome you to the site. Well, that's our show. Thanks for watching. Goodbye and good quilting, everyone. We've had a wonderful time. Yes. Why don't you audience, come on down. Show us how to do this.